Uh, hey guys, welcome. I am here today talking with Jeremiah Chapman, Gino Pierce of Performance Course. I'm going to let them introduce introduce themselves and and give their background. But we uh, got a special treat here. Performance Course is unlike anything in the entire country, and I'm going to let them explain why that is. I was privileged enough to get to work with them part time and full time for a little bit, but I want to welcome Gino Pierce and Jeremiah Chapman. Awesome. Thanks, Coachman. You hear me? Okay. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I am. my name's Gino Pierce, and I'm the owner of Performance Course, the janitor, whatever you want to call me. I do, I do a number of different things. Um, and we are the largest on-site provider of sports performance programs in the country. Um, we work out of... Uh, high schools uh, throughout really the Southwest region, primarily Texas and, and Oklahoma and set up long-term athlete development programs that, that are goal oriented. Um, they help kids learn about character leadership and coming together as a team. And, and it's been something that we've done for a long time. Um, we don't even really look at it as a, as a training program, it's more of a, a team building program where you develop your culture and and learn to grow together um, with your teammates. And uh, it all is kind of started as a as a grassroots movement um, over the years. I believe this is our twenty third year in business, and um, we are we are rapidly growing. Um, we've expanded into Austin and Houston recently in the last couple of years, as well as the state of Oklahoma. We primarily um, do, do most of our programming in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, but it is, it has really, really started to take off, especially the last couple of years. So. Nice. Jeremiah. Yeah. Hey guys, Jeremiah Chapman from, PC. I'm the, the vice president and uh, kind of, I guess, in charge of programming the workouts, but I've been involved uh, in some form or fashion for for almost 13 years as a full-time or part-time employee. Uh, I also went through PC as a, as a young athlete, as a seventh grader. So I've had an opportunity to, to view it uh, from an athlete's perspective and kind of learn about goal setting and, and learn about how to, how to handle yourself in the weight room. And, and now on the flip side, uh, many years later, uh, getting to do it full time and, and work alongside Gino. So it's been awesome. Uh, the, the growth over the last few years and, and now where we're at, um, moving everything online and, and watching that grow has been, has been super interesting as well. And we're excited. So, I mean, we jump right into it and you've got my attention. You move everything online before, you know, you address the Corona thing. Gino, you've been doing this since the mid nineties. Uh, I can't remember the exact date of it. And chap, you've been part of it for 13 years, if not longer, and you've opened training. Me personally, I always had the feeling and have the kids changed? What has changed the delivery? Has anything changed over 25 years as far as working with the athletes, working with the kids? Are you having to be different or is it just a different delivery? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't think the kids have really changed. I think, I think the expectations that parents, educators have for kids maybe have changed a little bit. Um, but I think for the most part, uh, kids are still the same. I mean, I, I'll probably have an unpopular opinion in the fact that I think kids are asked to do more than, than they've ever been asked to do. And, and, they're they're as they're as good as they've ever been. Um, I think there there are things that are different. Um, um, obviously, the culture has changed with with social media. I think that's a huge one. Um, kids are. I think they're probably under a little more pressure than they have been before. Um, I think the the amateurism of what goes on is is not quite what it used to be. Um, so I. You know, I, I think some of those things are, are different, but as far as kids being different, heck no. I, I, I think they're as, they're as good and as tough as they've ever been. I just, I think they're, they're, the expectations of them and things like that as far as social media and, and the outside pressures that they have may be, may be a little more intense than, than they were in the past. 
Yeah, it's even when and I'm young, 32, whatever, 31, even 15 years ago, things that we were doing coaching and with you guys, I wasn't even asked to do in high school. And I know, Chap, you're a little bit older than I. Have you felt a difference or did you, I mean, you went through it. You you were trained by Gino at one point and then you got to play uh, Division One ball. Have you seen it change? Has your delivery changed to kids from when you were uh, accepting coaching at China Spring and then now to how you're coaching now? Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll echo what Gino said. I don't, I don't feel as far as what we are doing has changed and, and we're in a good situation where we're, we're pretty fortunate. Uh, we work with a lot of, of good programs, a lot of great coaches and get to kind of piggyback on the culture that they establish. So for us, it's, it's going in and, and running a workout and doing what we've kind of always done. And I think one of the approaches we take and, and one of the reasons coaches enjoy us coming in is because it is more blue collar, if you want to call it that. It's it's about, you know, getting after it. And, and obviously there's principles and and the things that we do from a strength and conditioning standpoint that that we're going to make sure, you know, hold up. But the the work ethic and the mentality that goes into the training, I think that's something that that the coaches we work for do a great job. Uh, and then we get to kind of just go in and and it's icing on the cake for us to go in and work with those guys and kind of continue to build on that platform that's already been established. But I don't, you know, when I was at China Spring, I did, it was, you know, Adam's course back in the day. Um, we we were outside, we ran 50, 40s. That was our conditioning. And, and we did it out on the pavement because that's the only place we had to go. Um, they were redoing our field the summer that we went through it. So, uh, you know, we're still doing that to this day, not on pavement, hopefully, but we're modifying, adapting. And, and if, you know, the good thing about what we do is that we can kind of, uh, be a chameleon and go into any place in any program and, and run performance course, but adapt it to that coach and, and those kids kind of style and culture that they're, they're used to. So you, you brought up a unique point and it was something that y'all will be shocked and you'll laugh that I struggled with when I came to work full time, uh, not so many years back with y'all is, Gino, for whatever reason, you figured it out in the mid nineties or late nineties that it wasn't necessarily about the X's and O's as much as it was your five points of the, of the star. What made you gravitate to that so much? I mean, I, I never asked you when I word for it, but you could have easily gone scientific route, but you said, no, it's, it's about these five things. Why did you go that route? Okay. Well, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I do know. I think so. So first of all, I, th I think something is important, and and for me, I'm not. I, I try to be introspective and, and think about what was important to me. And when I look back in my training and my 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 journey through athletics and and what I had done with my coaches and my teammates. To me, that was what I remembered most. It wasn't the training. It was it was how you felt about being together with your teammates and working hard. And I always felt like strength and conditioning. You know, you know, I, I planned on being a football coach. I didn't plan on being a strength and conditioning coach. Um, and I the 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 scientific principles and in, in the approach, man, that's super important. You, you have to do that from from a professionalism standpoint, but. But that's not my passion. My passion is is helping kids and coaches and teams. And and so when I got into this, I guess two things happened. Number one, I really tried to think about the power and, and the feeling that I had going through the program. And it was because we worked so hard and we were so proud of, of what we had done and, and how we had been together as teammates. So that was number one. And then number two, I quickly realized that that my job is to serve. My job is not to tell people they need to do it this way or that way or whatever it may be. You know, I, I think uh, I think in time, coaches found great value in what we do, but th but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that that we keep this in mind. There's three entities in the transaction, if you will, that we have go on. There's the parent; they pay a fee. Um, we got to give them more than they pay for. 
but that is not our client. There's the kid and that kid is incredibly important. I am that kid. Jeremiah is that kid. You are that kid. There are a lot of us that were those kids. Um, and they are our why. That's why we do this. But they are not our client. The client is the coach. And when I started doing, when I started running this business, what I realized real quickly was I'm working for that coach. If I take care of that coach, then everything else is going to take care of itself. And it's, and it's like I say, we don't have a philosophy. Our philosophy is that coach's philosophy. Our philosophy is whatever he wants us to push to those kids. We work for that coach. And, and I think that's what, what has really helped us. Sorry, I got the dogs in the background. Hold on. Molly. Sorry. You probably never had this happen. So I think, uh, all right, Jamie is totally okay. Is totally okay. okay. All, right. all right. So I think that, that at the end of the day, we have to remember what we're really all about. And that is, that is we work for these coaches. So, um, and, and that's who we're serving and that is our client and we're trying to push their culture. And ultimately we, we, we like to look at what we do in, from this perspective. We are a team building program that teaches kids about belief in themselves, in each other, and something a little bigger. That teaches them leadership and the fact that that's, a, that's, a, that's done from a servant perspective. To teach them about attitude, attitude and that's a can-do attitude that you're going to do whatever it takes to achieve your dreams and goals about being consistent because it's one of the hardest things in the world to do, but it's one of the simplest things to do it. And it's the mark of a champion and about effort because it's one of those single things that you can control. And that is, that is, and Jeremiah mentioned it earlier, that is blue collar work ethic. And those six things, that's what we want the kids to get out of it. And we're using strength and conditioning as the platform to teach those six things. And, and if we do that, we feel like we're successful. Um, we stay very fundamental, basic, principled. These are kids, even, even, even high-end kids, three, four, five-star kids that we have in our programs athletically, that, that is all they need. They need basic fundamentals and they need to learn how to work hard and put we over me. And that's ultimately what we're trying to do. It is a simple formula and, and it is, it is something that has been really successful for us. I, successful is is an understatement for those of you because Gino is being a little modest and so is Jeremiah. They work with some of the highest profile high schools in the state of Texas, anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 kids in the school, state championship after state championship, all the ones that around the country that you hear of these high schools in the state of Texas performance course works with these and Jeremiah, I do have a question because so Gino created this and started this bad boy and has built it from the ground up uh, and has put blood, sweat and tears in it. And along the way, y'all met each other while he was coaching you at UNT for uh, your pro day. What made you kind of flip the switch and you said, man, I, I want to go work for performance course. And then secondly, Gino, why did you pick Jeremiah? I don't this is going to be an interesting question for me. Well, before Jeremiah says anything, I'm a good recruiter. So go ahead, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, are you with us? He may have froze up on us a little bit. I oh, froze up a little bit. Gino, can you go into, um, so you, I'm just trying to educate the people that are watching and listening exactly how and what you do and how you provide uh, kind of just the mechanics of the entire situation. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, so in a nutshell, what we do is we go into school districts and provide opportunities for their kids to train year round. They, they decide the time and, and what, what works best for their culture. Um, and we offer these programs as, as classes. So if you were to go into a school district and maybe they're underachieving in math scores, you might hire some outside tutors, um, to, to help elevate those, those math scores. We're a little bit like that in, in the fact that you're going to, 
as opposed to having a sports performance facility where we go to you, or I'm sorry, they, they come to you, we are going to actually go to your school and we are going to offer training programs at your school during opportune times of the year that the district has decided um, fits what they're looking for. And these programs are set up based off of developmental level. And, and we basically run about four different developmental levels. We have a youth programming. We have a middle school grouping. Um, and then we have kind of the older kids groupings. Uh, and, and it's almost like you graduate from one class to the next. And within these classes, there's a starting point and an ending point. You're tested and evaluated at the beginning. You're tested and evaluated again at the end, just like you would in any class that you would, you know, attend in school. But it's it's to improve athletic performance and character and, and leadership. And, and within this 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 training block, the classes usually last about six to eight weeks. They're progressive in nature. One day builds upon the next. And there's an end goal in mind by the end of the program. And, and as this six to eight week class takes place, the kids will show up three or four times, five times a week at a designated time. And during that time, they'll also learn about, uh, you know, other things that that will help them not only athletically, but personally. So we start to integrate nutrition, goal setting, character development, mental preparation, and we teach them how this can all be tied back to, to achievement, obviously athletically, but but also just in in personal everyday life. And and that is that is how we do it. Uh, the kids are are tested and evaluated at the beginning and the end of the program, and they're provided uh, the, their evaluations at the end. Um, and we literally have kids from first grade grow up through these programs. The thing that, that has been really neat to see is we have kids that grew up in our program who are now working for us as adults, professionals that have families. Um, uh, we have coaches that, you know, I used to pick on when they're in fourth or fifth grade and, and now they're a, they're a head football coach at a big class six A program, and and overseeing their their entire organization, and and it, it's it's really almost come full scale. We have, and this is this is something that I really <laughs> have seen a lot the last couple of years. Is I, I guess it's not so good because it means I'm getting old, but I have multiple children show up to our programs. And their parents will walk up and they were kids in our program. So um, I, I think that that kind of gives you an idea of, of the culture and and, you know, and I'll have dads walk up and, hey, I want you to my kid needs his butt kick like I used to get it kicked and stuff like that. So um, it's been really neat to see see a lot of that happen, especially in the last couple of years. Yeah, it's that I talk to other coaches and whether it's a university or high school level and. It, that's always the common theme is they always come back and say it's really cool when an ex player reaches out or when an ex player um you know just checks on him and sees how he's doing during covid you've got the unique opportunity we'll call it an opportunity Gino that you are getting to see some of your former players now become dads and fathers which is the ultimate goal for people like Jeremiah for people like me for people that are on your staff currently is to create these men that are that become great men that have the core values that you helped use your platform to instill. And now they have young children and they know that they want them to go through that process. Chap, and I, I am going to be presumptuous here. Jeremiah, how did you take all of this and bundle it and put it online? Because I know Gino and his online technical skills and they're not awesome. They're not bad, but they're not awesome. How did you go about doing that? Yeah, uh, you're asking the technology guy that just uh, got kicked off this meeting because he apparently his <laughs> internet wasn't working. Uh, no, but I, I think, you know, we were in a really good situation because of, you know, they say, you know, I guess prepare for everything. And we, we have been doing things behind the scenes for, you know, three and four years, um, whether it's talking about consulting with, other schools, which we've done, we've uh, flown to Pampa, Texas in the panhandle. We've flown to Arkansas and, and met with coaches and started to, you know, have this idea that we would like to do this beyond, 
just Texas and, and get what we do kind of in the hands of coaches and allow them to, you know, utilize the, the, the character traits and utilize the things that, you know, just kind of touched on because that is m- more important than any strength and conditioning or any, you know, that's what you get from team sports. And that's why sports are so popular, I think, because of that's, that's, you know, the, the leadership and the, the qualities that are going to benefit those kids way beyond their, their careers. Um, and so we want to find a way to, to hopefully help, help coaches and help kids outside of our kind of sphere of influence, I guess, if you want to call it that. So we started looking at that, I guess, three and four years ago and, and started moving everything that we had internally online. Uh, and you were here for some of that and putting together videos. And we have a library of almost probably, I think it's up to a thousand videos on YouTube. And every one of them has this unique uh, voiceover uh, by the guy that's interviewing me right now. Uh, and, and, you know, we've, we've been able to put literally every exercise that we have in our exercise poor menu online. Um, and we put it into a, a manual for our staff internally and for the part-time guys that come on board, you know, the 200 guys that we have to train every year to, to help pull this off. So we could be organized and efficient uh, and started moving things online. And, and so when this happens, you know, we got a chance to practice kind of what we what we preach all the time. And that's control what you can control and, you know, do what you got to do um, with the cards you're dealt. And so talk to Gino. And this was this was literally, I think, the Sunday after spring break. So nobody really knew what was going to happen, but kind of got with together with him and his wife and my wife and said, what do we want to do? And so I started, I basically hold myself up in my office for about five days straight and took every template that we have that Gino just mentioned, the kind of different levels and hyperlinked them all with the videos that fortunately we already had access to, um, put all of our, got my wife cause she's, she's the, the real brains behind the, the online stuff and got Ashley involved to, build out all the units of the character traits. And then we have our, all of our guys are awesome. As you know, they, they got on and started filming videos and started creating content and started doing all the things to make it a virtual performance course. And so once we were able to do that, um, we put it out and, you know, hope to, to keep things together long enough for, for this to kind of pass over. And now that it's, it's still going, it's, it's been really cool to see how the teams that we train, uh, in the summer and that we train during the school year that that are our guys they they said hey we, we want to not only do we want to help you guys out because we know with the situation you're in but we want our kids to be doing something and this is the best thing um that we can find and so started getting feedback from them and it's just it's probably on its fourth or fifth iteration of hey we took these templates and put them out and with did some units on facebook and had some guests come in so now we have a modified equipment, uh, an entire playlist where Coach Catlett went and filmed videos of how to build home equipment um, and, and put a, a template together uh, that's this very similar to what you would be doing if you're using a full-blown weight room. Um, so the kids can still have that team kind of concept and they're still doing the same things. Uh, just may look a little different as far as the, the implement. And then we came out with a body weight version uh, and we're able to link all those as well. Um, so kind of have three variations for each, each, you know, developmental level. And then not with that, then we, then we got it onto a, a mobile platform where we can deliver it through rack performances app. And, and it's another thing we've been doing for two or three years that kind of behind the scenes that just, it all just, we're in the right place, right time. And we're able to take advantage of it and, and get that where now it's the coaches that we work for that Gino was talking about. We can, we can, give them access and they can see their kids, how much time they're actually putting in and see what they're doing inside the workout um, and, and track them there to kind of have some accountability piece. We got kids and, and trying to do stuff on social media and within uh, several different groups that we can allow them to have some type of team chemistry still, you know, in this situation, but do it all in a, in a way that it's all, it's all done digitally right now. So I, just because I've been asked it before, and this is up for either one of you, is people will say, well, what's the difference between performance course and especially what they're doing with ETA right now and something like, uh, what is it, rack builder or team perform, team builder, excuse me, team builder and performance course. How is that any different between what y'all are providing, what they're providing? 
And outside of me saying, well, there's an actual human behind it that's trying to create relationships and push something more than just numbers. I don't have very good information because I don't convey that very well. What would y'all say to that so that I can start telling people the right thing? Yeah, I'll jump in and talk first. But to be to be honest, I don't know the difference because one thing that I don't ever want to get caught up in, obviously we have people that influence us and we have the Joe Kins and, and the Mike Bulls and things and the, the people that I look at and Yancey McKnight are, are guys that I'm going to call and bounce ideas off of. But I try not to look at anybody else's stuff and because I don't ever want it to you know, seem like, oh, we just took their idea and ran with it. Um, so I don't even know what team, I don't even know what those platforms all have, what what's all involved. Uh, I do know that we are communicating with coaches on a daily basis, trying to see what they need. And then we're trying to fill those needs for them versus putting something together and say, this is the way you should do it. Um, like Gino mentioned, like we, we, the relationships, as you know, in, in any business and any, and really in life in general is, is the key to everything. And that's, that's who we're going to and asking, how can we serve you? How can we help you? Um, and, and building our program based off what they tell us they need and what they want their kids doing. And that's what we're putting into the, the workouts, not, not some cookie cutter um, template that we would, you know, it's not going to be the same every time. Like, obviously if this continues, we will, we're already working on a summer version that the workouts are completely different. The videos will be completely different. We'll have all new uh, guest mentors coming in to educate the kids. You know, everything will be new. It's not going to be something we continue just to resell, which I think a lot of these, they're kind of everything's done prepackaged and we're, we're adapting on the fly. So I, I would say that may be the biggest difference is we are literally building it for coaches as we go and can, and can, can maneuver a lot quicker. Our ship isn't as big. We don't have to turn, you know, a, a cruise ship. We're, we're just in a little, in a little rowboat and uh, making, making things happen. I don't know if you're a little rowboat. That seems a little, you're not giving yourself enough credit, but I, I understand it now. Gino, I think the first thing that you ever said to me or one of the first things you ever said to me when I came on full time is that performance course is a service. It's not a product. And when I took this transition, I transitioned to this job at play. One of the things that they preached is that we don't sell products. We sell services, we sell relationships. And so it makes sense. And, and again, I just kind of turned to you and, and, how did you figure out? When did you figure out? It's like, this is not about a product. This is about a relationship with, again, your relationship with people like the president of the Texas High School Coaches Association because you started it 20 years ago and things of that nature. Yeah, I, I honestly, I, <laughs> you know me, I just treat others like you, like you would want to be treated. And, and I try to, again, just try to be, introspective and and how did i figure all this out i mean hell i don't know i just thought what if i was in their shoes what would i want and so what i tried to do was give them what they wanted and look at it from from that perspective and i think jeremiah just said it with this 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 new online um programming that we're doing i i think that th there's really two things that and again i don't I, I had to let Jeremy, I don't even know who, what those, you know, I. You muted yourself. Sorry. So as, as I was saying, I'm now muting myself. I don't know what this other stuff is. All I know is what we do and we try to be better than we were yesterday. And when people ask me, how did you figure all this out? I didn't figure anything out. All I did was, I, <laughs> I, I was in the right place at the right time and I worked my butt off and, and I still, and I, and I have to, we all do, we all have to work our butt off every day to, to take care of these coaches. And, and that is literally what we've tried to do. And the thing with, with this, I guess I'm jumping around, but getting back to the, to the subject, how are we different? Well, I, I think two things are going to happen and, we don't know how we are different. We had to ask the coaches and over the last two weeks, I mean, like there's three things that have already come up. I think number one is we're going to do a virtual program for 40 days straight. So we will literally get on camera and we will train these kids. We will train your kids 
for 40 days. We're not going to record it and you just watch it. We're going to up the ante because that is what coaches told us they wanted. Um, we're going to try to run them at times that we feel like will be the most opportune for kids to be on there. So, so we're going to change where the, those virtual times are going to be, be at selective times that coaches have, have spoke with us about. And then I think that, that really the, the, the third thing is, is this is, this is completely fluid. And, you know, you've heard me say that before everything's fluid because it, it's like, you know, I, I'm not a real deep thinker, so I, I don't know. I, it's like waiting tables, you know, if, if you got a good waiter, they're going to, they're going to do it exactly the way you want it. And that may have to change depending on how the, 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 the dinner goes, but we are going to be on call and create this thing the way the co the coaches are the one driving this. We serve those coaches and we're going to drive this in the direction that they want to go. And, and that's how we've always been. And, and it's how we always will be. That's our, that is our client and that's the livelihood to, to what we do. So transitioning just slightly off of that, which I, you know, you know that I love performance course and I love you guys and, and I think highly of it. And I just, I get to talk to a lot of coaches around a lot of the areas of the country. And I know that they needed to hear from y'all, your model, because they all are battling the same questions of what we do, how do we do it? And hearing it from y'all's mouth was much more important, but Gino, you can't sit still for more than 15 seconds and chap, you're a pretty busy person as well. How are y'all handling quarantine right now? Specifically, personally, are y'all able to get I mean, what Gino? Are you, are you just going out and driving your car just so that you can get out and go drive your car? Like, what are you doing at this point? Well, you want the you want the politically correct answer, or you want the the real hey, answer? Man, it's you're driving not, me you're nuts. Not quarantining. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. It's driving me nuts. And I think I think the biggest the biggest challenge to all this is, you know, it's like we told our guys, you, we'll take on anything. I mean, doesn't matter. But the most difficult part is is we'll play any game we need to play. We just need to know the rules to the game. And when you don't know the rules to the game, it's difficult to play that game. And for us, the rules are, what are they? We don't know. I mean, we're trying to figure it out as we go. There's no, there, we've been, there's no end time to this. We don't know when this is supposed to be over. So what we're trying to do is make the best of a, of a, of a difficult situation. And, and it's, it's, if, if I told you, hey, it's all great, I, I'd be lying to you. Um, I, I absolutely hate it, and I, I, I want us all to be safe, but we need to get back to work too. And, and there's a there's a fine line between that, and I think uh, I think we have a lot of people trying to figure out what that is. But I, I this is not sustainable over over time, and and hopefully we can find a way where we can keep people safe, but also get back to work and, and get kids back in school. Gino, you've got a teenager, two teenagers, and chap, you have two that are very, very little. How is that stark difference going on? How are the teenagers handling it, Gino? And how are the little ones handling it, Jeremiah? I don't have any kids. I have a dog and that's pretty easy in quarantine. I've got to imagine that's becoming very interesting. Well, I'll, I'll speak quick with mine. Probably the only ones that have benefited off this are, are my kids because they literally get trained all day long. So um, that is that is a positive. Uh, I, I told Jamie, I said, I think the only one that's benefiting from this is, is Peyton. Um, and then it's been good for me because I get to spend a lot of time with Lainey, uh, which is my sixth grade daughter. And we've had it it's been really good for our relationship. We, uh, we do the speed development together and, uh, she's, uh, let's just say she's, she's got the upper hand on me. So <laughs> Jeremiah, I'll let you, I'll let you talk about your little ones. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's gotten better this week. I think we're getting into a, a better groove, but uh, you know, I'm a kind of a creature of habit. 
and I do the same things pretty much every day, but I get up early. I get up between three and four, depending on what time I go to bed and still doing that, uh, going to bed later than I would probably like, especially the first couple of weeks where we were trying to put this thing together, staying up till, you know, 1130, 12 o'clock and then doing it all over again and then trying to work during the day talk to cut the only time you can talk to coaches and interact with other humans is not at 4 a.m so you know, doing that while the kids are here and not at school is was super challenging especially onboarding everyone that kind of jumped on the first first couple of weeks it was uh you know probably kids watched a lot more tv than we really wanted them to that we that we would normally allow but you know it's kind of a do what you got to do to to get this thing going but the last ashley had kind of last I guess two weeks ago said, Hey, we got to put together a, a schedule. So we posted a schedule on the wall and the kids know at this time they're eating breakfast at this time, Ryan, you got schoolwork, which she's, a, she's eight, she's in second grade. So she's doing all of her work online. So she works, she does her schoolwork for about two hours in the morning. Uh, Ashton, our three-year-old boy, he, me and him go play, go read, go do something for, for an hour and then try to get outside and uh, if he's got a truck or something to dig in the dirt, he's pretty good. And I can talk on the phone with coaches and then we have lunch. We, we let him play some more and we nap time is right now. Two to four is, is when uh, when we can get some more work done and then get them to bed by seven or seven thirty because we're we're those mean parents that make their kids go to bed early. And uh, that's when we get back on the computer and, and work some more. So. It's uh, it's been good though. The last couple that you know, the first two weeks was was it was it was rough because me and Ashley both you know, obviously working together. So we had that. There's that strain. There's a strain of not knowing what's going on. There's a strain of your kids being at home where you're trying to get stuff done and you're basically creating a whole new business at the same time. Um, so but it's been good now. I feel like we kind of got a got a good routine and. Uh, Kids have adapted this week. We've had we had no fallouts. First couple of weeks were tough. We had a, a broken tooth, uh, a gashed eye, and uh, on top of everything else. <laughs> so, but it's it's good now. It's good. We're, we we moved past that. Tooth got fixed. Eyes healed up, and uh, we're good to go. Well, guys, I wake up and I let my dog out and then I uh, just come into the office and I start working for however many hours that I'm going to continue to work and Brittany goes to work. That's So we can see where our lives are a whole lot different. But uh, man, I really appreciate y'all coming on and talking. And like I said before, I love y'all and I love performance course and I could never do it just as I've explained it to a bunch of people. But I've run into enough coaches now over the last two weeks that needed information they needed to hear about this um and so that was why i wanted to have this so we can get it out to those people's hands but i guess gino if you want to wrap it up in, in a one or two minute little synopsis of performance course or if you were given your one little pitch to to a coach on what you do for kids and why you do it and why it's great for them i'll let you finish this off before we finish yeah sure so i think I don't even think it'd take one or two minutes. I think it's it's pretty simple. We uh, we're we're nothing but a tool to use for your program. Um, we're an extension of what you're doing, and and you're gonna go, you're gonna purchase programs. You're gonna you're gonna get huddle. You're gonna purchase equipment. Um, you're not gonna make it yourself. And really. We're the same way. You're going to utilize us as a tool that works for you to help your kids. And, and it's, it's really that simple. We don't come in to take over a program. We come in to help and, and, and work for you and put the kids first and, and do it in a, in a, in a humble, uh, you know, blue collar grassroots manner where, where we, we put the kids first and, and, and work to push your culture. And, th and that's, that's essentially it. And I think that the, the, the thing that comes up a lot of times is, Hey, I look, I'm, I, I don't have control of my program and, and I'll argue that it's, it's almost the polar opposite. You have more control than you ever have ha would have had before because man, we, we've got, we've got everything in the game and, and, and it's our, it's our livelihood is, is depends on pleasing you and your kids. So 
I guess that's my my quick spiel with it. Well, nice. I would echo that, and it is the livelihood, and it is what uh, there is no bigger passion when you got coaches that go through four shirts in a day because they're coaching that hard, which happens. There is no bigger passion. But Gino Chap, I really appreciate y'all coming on, man, and uh, we'll talk to y'all very soon. I hope y'all all have a great rest of your day. Hey, thanks, Evan. This is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate you, Coachman.